My name is Asia Samson, and today on Baptism Overland, I'm canning the Jerry's. But I'm Next to me is the Titan Trail Trekker fuel tank made for the Jeep Wrangler. If you follow my channel, then you'll know that not too long ago, I installed the front runner jerry can holders along with two wavy and jerry cans. And they've been great. They've met my needs. I've been able to use them a ton, but I need a change. And the reason why is because I am going to soon start putting a lot more things on the roof rack and I don't want to exceed the weight limit. Those two jerry cans with fuel in them weigh about 100 pounds. And that's 100 pounds that's sitting on top of the roof rack that can be used for other things. Not to mention, I've almost killed myself with those jerry cans a few times. Trying to get the jerry cans from the roof rack down to the ground without slipping on whatever you're stepping on to get up there and then maneuvering it downwards, I mean, it was killing my back. And one time I was trying to bring it down and I was able to catch it, but it almost fell on top of my head. That's just way too dangerous. So I've always wanted to put my jerry cans in the back area where my spare tire was. But all the setups I've seen for the Jeep on how they put it back there, I'm not a big fan. Like I, I always have loved the way Forerunners have had like the double gates where you can have spare tire on one side and then jerry cans on the other. I've always loved that, but we don't have that for the Jeep yet. I've seen some drawings and some plans for something similar to that, but they're not really in production yet. And I don't know, I would rather have my fuel next to my spare tire, but not do it in the way that I've seen other people mount their jerry cans. So the next best thing was the AEV fuel caddy. But to get the AEV fuel caddy, you'll also need to get the AEV bumper and AEV tire carrier. And all together, you're looking at about a $2,000 upgrade. I know that I'm going to be upgrading my rear bumper soon, but I'm not 100% sold on the AEV one. They're amazing, but the styling of them will not fit any of the styling I have on the Jeep. So I'm thinking about just staying with the ARB line of stuff. And ARB does not make a fuel caddy for their rear bumpers. So enter Titan. They make a fuel caddy that will pretty much mount to any setup you have on your Jeep Wrangler, whether it's a JK, YJ, or TJ, and almost any vehicle that has a spare tire carrier. Because they have all these mounting holes on there, you can mount this to pretty much almost anything. So that's why I'm going with Titan. Now this thing brand new retails for about $402. Pretty steep. However, I was lucky enough that my friend sent me a link to someone who was selling this off Facebook for $175. They live about 60 miles away from where I live. I contacted them and I said, hey, do you still have it? And they said, yes. I said, all right, I'm willing to come down there and pick it up. Can you give it to me for a lot less? And I was able to get this from them for 130 bucks. Now what I ended up getting is obviously the tank and also your mounting plate. The way this works is this gets mounted to your spare tire carrier, bolted on, and then you take your plate, attach it to here, and then your spare tire goes on to here. When I got it from him, his was set up for a Toyota because he was using it on his FJ. So he took out the studs that was already there, gave me the studs that came with this kit, and then I took those studs along with this plate to my nearest tire repair shop and I asked how much they would charge me to just punch these in. I could have done it myself, but I didn't want to go through the hassle. I don't have a press. So I brought it over to them and they just punched it in for me for, I don't know, $10. So it's not expensive at all. So overall, all this cost me about 140 bucks. And then you also get a grounding wire. And at first I was confused. I'm like, why is there a grounding wire? Does this thing light up or something? And what it is, is to prevent static electricity buildup. There's been accidents at gas stations when people are filling up their jerry cans with fuel and there's static electricity and suddenly that little spark was enough to start a fire. So to prevent that, you attach this grounding wire to the top up here and then ground it somewhere on your vehicle to prevent any static electricity buildup and cause this thing to explode. Now this thing is pretty stout. This thing carries 12 gallons of fuel. 
When it's dry, it weighs about 15 pounds. Add in about 12 gallons of fuel at seven pounds a gallon. That's about 85 pounds. So altogether, total, this will weigh about 100 pounds. I do not yet have a reinforced tailgate hinge on the Jeep. So I know I'm going to need to upgrade that, especially if you're adding 100 pounds of fuel plus a spare tire. That's going to kill my hinges very, very quickly. So I'm going to need to get a stronger hinge to put back there or go ahead and upgrade my rear bumper with a tire carrier and then place this and the tire on that so that it is strong and won't go anywhere. In the meantime though, until I'm actually going on trips, I'm not going to keep this thing filled up. So an extra 15 pounds right now should not hurt. But when I do fill it up, you know, that's a lot of weight that you're putting on that tailgate. So make sure that you reinforce it, which I'll do soon enough. All right, well, that's all great, Asia, but how do you transfer the fuel? Well, that's actually pretty easy. The fuel cap for this, right here. You fill it up with fuel, and what you do to get it into your fuel tank is you use a self-siphoning tube. They're a tube that basically has a ball bearing at one end, and you stick that end into your fuel tank Give it a couple of jerks and then it creates a vacuum and then the fuel will then flow out and into your fuel tank. If you buy one of these brand new, you do get a self-siphoning tube for free. And the guy I bought this from was actually trying to give me the one that he got with this. But I told him it's okay. Keep it. I already have one. Get yourself a self-siphoning tube. Don't siphon it with your mouth. That's just dangerous and can be fatal if you do it wrong and it's gross. Get a self-siphoning tube makes it so much easier to transfer fuel from one canister to the other so long as the canister that the fuel is coming from is on a higher plane than the canister to which you're transferring it to. This will be higher than the fuel tank of the Jeep. I'll just use a self-siphoning tube and then fuel will come out and go inside and transfer 12 ounces very very quickly. I believe it does Two gallons a minute. You're looking at about six minutes and you'll get all 12 gallons out of this and into your vehicle. So that's pretty much it. That's the overview of this thing. Let's just go ahead and install it. So before I actually install this thing, first thing I'm going to do is finish cleaning it up. Remember that I got this used and when I got it, it was dusty, it was dirty, plus it had already started to fade. So took a pressure washer to it, cleaned that off, and now what I'm going to do is recondition it and I'm going to basically use the Black Plastic Restorer from Meguiar. So this is what we use also for the bumper and the fenders when it starts to fade a little bit, those plastic fenders and bumpers. Take one of these to it, shine it right back up. So that should make this look a lot nicer. You don't want to repaint this thing because it's plastic and paint will scrape off eventually and it'll start to scratch off and you don't want it to look messy. So this should work really well and then basically the tire will hide most of this anyway. But I just want to kind of get it nice and clean. you want to bet a ton of you didn't skip any of that because it's kind of satisfying to watch things get cleaned. Let's install it. Okay, so I hit a little bit of a snafu. I overlooked the fact that this thing is so big that it's gonna cover that third brake light. You were supposed to get an extension for it, but I think I have a different solution, one that's actually cleaner. So I'll do that later, but for now, I'm gonna soldier on, remove the light that's there now, and just continue with the build. And we'll tackle that third brake light a little bit later. <music>
right, the last thing we're going to do is solve that third brake light situation we got going on. Now that I've cut it off, I have to find a way to get a third brake light going on the Jeep for safety. Now what I can do is get an extension to extend that OEM brake light above the fuel tank, but I think I have a better and much cleaner idea so that I'm not crowding the back area with just a whole bunch of stuff that's just mounted to the back of the Jeep. Just for warning, this is not my idea. I saw somebody else on YouTube do this, so I will link that below so you can see their full install. But how I'm doing it is I am going to be using this LED light strip. This is a red LED light strip that's actually made for motorcycles. And as you can see, it's bendable because you can kind of curve it around motorcycle seats. This comes with multiple wires so that you can also rig up your turn signals and all that. But I'm just using this only specifically for that third brake light. I am going to place this behind the rear window. Wire it up to the existing wiring for the third brake light that I have now, and then when you close the window, you won't even see it, but every time I hit the brakes, these will light up and it'll shine right through the window and it should look really cool and really clean. So let's see if that works. Alright, that's it. Pretty straightforward. Got it done in about an hour and that includes mounting this new tank as well as installing that new third brake light. I have to say, I really, really love this setup. You know, before when I had my jerry cans, it was becoming to be a pain in the butt just having those jerry cans on the roof taking them down, filling them up, and then having to hoist them back up on the roof. They were like 50 pounds each. And then when it was time to fill the tank, I had to bring those jerry cans down and it was just getting dangerous. And it was becoming more of a hassle than it needed to be. I know that I'll be using these jerry cans for the 4Runner anyway, so I'm not getting rid of them. But as far as the Jeep, I like having this auxiliary tank right behind my spare tire. Noticeable, yes, but kind of discreet, right? So I like the setup. I'm glad I'm going with this. I am not going to waste your time by showing you how to fill your gas tank with it. There's tons of videos on that. But hopefully there will be a trip that I will video that you'll be able to see me use this stuff along with all the other gear that I put onto this Jeep. One quick thing about this Titan fuel tank though is after I installed it, I locked everything down, made sure everything was cinched tightly and to spec and yet for some reason there was still some sort of play with the spare tire. I tried to see if there was play on the fuel tank and it was fine. It wasn't moving but for some reason the spare tire kept kind of wobbling. So I took off the lug nuts that were on there just in case maybe I was bottoming them out and then I bought regular nuts and put them on where I can tighten it all the way down and I did that and there was still some play. So what I ended up doing was taking the spare tire off and then I took the plate that it mounts on and I just brought it out one more notch. You know, on that plate that you mount up there, there are various notches based on how much backspacing your spare tire has. So I had it like on the third setting before and I brought it out just a little bit more and that basically stopped that plate. I think what it was was on the third setting, although it is pretty close, it was still not enough for the spare tire to really cinch onto that plate. So I brought it out just one more, got it on there, and now it's tight. It's not going anywhere because it was kind of scary for a while. Like I just didn't want to be driving down the road and my spare tire falls off or something and hits somebody behind me. It could have gotten bad if that happened. But now everything is cinched down, not going anywhere. And yeah, I'm really liking this. Pretty self-explanatory. Nothing too crazy with this week's install, but... Hopefully, maybe it made you consider getting a Titan fuel tank to put behind your spare tire or maybe even the AEV fuel caddy that they have with their bumper setups. I think it's just a great setup rather than having jerry cans up there. As much as I love the look of jerry cans, I just think this is just a little bit 
cleaner and it's a little bit nicer. If this was informative for you, I hope you liked this video. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson and I will see you next time. Thank you.